morning everybody from southern Spain it's Claire here just to bring you a quick video to say that I've been having great fun with this book by Sarah Peel hopefully you can see that okay um Luna Lapin having a great time making a couple of those if we've got some new babies due in the family um, and they make a great gift but I've just changed something and I didn't know whether it'd be useful for other people or not so um, other service so I thought I'd pop on here just do a quick video and let you know um what I've done. So I've traced off the patterns in the in the book which are um, all at full size so you just trace those off onto, onto um, tracing paper. I then cut those out and then I've stuck them onto card and it looks a bit messy from here but that's just where the glue's been um, and they then just make a really nice template. Now I've cut these out exactly at the size that it says in the book however I quite like making my lunas out of quilting cotton rather than felt. So what I've done with that is because I'm making them on my machine, I need to have a slightly bigger seam allowance. So when I am tracing out the um, pieces, what you need to do, if I look this here, I can give you out some pictures. I've actually interfaced these as well, to put an um, iron-on interfacing, this is a medium weight on there, just to um, give it some um, structure. And what I've also done, is add on an extra seam allowance. I think there's about um, two eighths of an inch, two three eighths of an inch on the seam allowance on the pattern already, and I've just added another, not quite a quarter of an inch, is it? Just a bit, a bit more again. I've almost doubled it just to make it so that I can actually get a good bite of it with my machine. Um, I like my lunas quite um, firm, so again that helps with um, with giving you some seam allowance for the stitches to grip onto. I lowered my stitch length as well down to 1.5 from the normal 2.2 for dressmaking um, and that also will make a nice strong sturdy um, seam that will hold, hold up to lots of um, lots of use once um, once the recipients start to play with these if they if they choose to if, if the mums let them but with the head I had a bit of a problem um, if we just look at the composition of the head we have a center seam here and then when we're shown in the instructions the idea is that you use the two separate pieces of the head insert your ears into a head piece and first and sew across each of those um, seams individually then put those two halves together and sew it along the middle now i did, must admit i did struggle a little bit with this on my machine because that center point just there is really quite elevated and quite thick so I had a little bit of an experiment so I'm going to share that with you now and just see if that helps anybody else. So I have my um, fabric interfaced as I just said and I've it's slightly bigger than the template and don't forget to cut two mirror copies if you're not working in felt. Felt is double sided so you don't need to worry about orientation of the fabric. So when you're do cutting it out in quilting cotton remember that you need two mirror images of the template. What I've done then is I and let's interface it. And then what I've done then is I have now sewn around here. You can't see it very well. I should have used a contrasting thread, but this one's a real one, so I didn't want to do it. So I've just gone all the way around, quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I've started and stopped here at the at the top of the head, and I've reverse stitched there just to cast on and cast off. So that's step one. The other thing that I've done is I have sewn my ears now. I sew them this way so I have a different coloured fabric on one side and the um, main fabric on the other. But then in order to help these sit properly I've then used my pinking shears which are these, they're just scissors with a serrated edge. They're very, um, they're a stalwart in, in most sewing boxes and you can get these quite cheaply anyway. And then you just trim around the edges because then that does the same effect as notching your stitches um, and, and it'll help your curve stay stay flatter. Once you've done that, if you then pull the two bits apart on your ears, oh, won't come, that's it. Tuck the end of the ear inside and then I use a the rounded end of a knitting needle just to help push that, push that through rest it on your desk so you don't go and injure yourself and then with the point just very gently just tease the edges out with the edge of the point and it'll just give you a nice seam allowance um, and it'll just give you a nice seam 
edge to do. Once you've done that, that's it's all part of the normal construction, press your ears and then we're just going to do the sew down the middle here. Use this to, so we're going to start about an inch from the top and just sew all the way down. I am going to use coordinating thread front and back. Um, it doesn't take long to change the, to change the thread and it looks so much better. So I'll just do that and then I'll pop back and just um, show you what I do next with these ears. So I've just sewn my ears using coordinating thread. The next step that I now do is I'm going to sew the two ears, fold them in half, both of them, and I'm then going to sew them back to back so that the folded edge is together. So if you just see that, it's together, and I'm just going to sew them with just a, a, a very small running stitch, just quite close to the edge just here, and hold those two together. So here we go, just sewing across the top there. Okay, next thing to do then is to take hold of your head and to pull the two sides apart. Because what we want to do is we want to create this little dart area in the top here. So I've just pulled the two sides of the face apart. I'm then going to finger press, put my finger in the hole and finger press, just fold the two seam allowances apart and flatten them down. One on that side and one on this side. Okay, that just makes it flatter for working with. Then what I want you to do is take your two ears, it doesn't matter whether they're right or wrong because they're identical on both sides, and just poke them up through the neck hole And poke the end of the ears through the opening. Just takes a little bit of wiggling. But you should be able to get it. And the fact that they're sti stitched together the right way round means that you can't transpose these and get them the wrong way round. Oops, too far. It looks fiddly, and I'm not making it look easy, but to be honest, it is. It's just getting them in the right position. So, and this is in real time, so I'm not cutting anything out, so you know that I'm struggling with you. Plus I'm doing it on camera, and that always makes, always makes it a little bit tricky. So, edges of the ears, into the points of the, there we go, that's better, edges of the ears into the points of the face and you're looking to get your seam allowances as well, sorry I'm doing that off camera, and you're looking to get your seam allowances flat and in the middle of the ears, I could probably do my glasses on now, but it's just to try and give you an idea of what I was doing. So seam allowances flat, you can see the edges of the ears poking through there. And now what I'm going to do is just do my seam across the edge here. So all the way across there. Just bear with me. And I'm going to shorten my stitch length as well. If it's a bit thick, while you're just wanting to sew this, just start a little bit in from the edge, reverse back to the edge of your seam and then come forward again. It'll just help your machine cope with it a little bit better. Just make sure you reverse back in again to the centre. Stick my threads. Okay, so here we are. We've sewn across the top of the ears just here. Hopefully you can see that. And now all I'm going to do is just pop this through. 
Now, um, or just to say, if your ears won't fit in quite properly because it'll depend on your seam allowance, just extend the um, gap at the side slightly, but remember to do it equally so that you've got your ears sitting in the centre because otherwise they won't, they won't look quite right. Pull your head through. Just being careful not to pop any stitches. Smooth out your seam. Oh, I've got a little thread there, but we'll stick that up just a minute. Little hair sticking up. And there we go, we've got two ears sewn in with minimum fuss. I'll just stuff this head now and then you'll be able to see how how that looks. So when it's stuffed, so bear with me. I forgot my own advice. Before you turn the head out properly, let's just pink these seams because they're all curved. And if we want those to sit properly, then we need to. So just take your pinking shears, snip into the corner where the edge of the neck is. It's just there. And then carefully, making sure not to snip anything that you don't want to, just take off a little edge around those stitches. They, you still need to make sure you've got plenty for the stitches to hold on to. But if you take your time and do it carefully, you can snip around that edge. And again, snip into the corner on the back, just where the neck is. That's the straight bit for the neck. I've just put one little snip just through there, hold it out of the way. We'll just go around the edge. That's our head done. And then when we turn this round the right way round, pulling gently on the ears, back to where we were, then <laughs> we can then put some stuffing in here and all of these seams. The other thing that I found on these machine stitched heads is, that if possible, have all of your um, seam allowance go in the same way. So as you're teasing your seams with your knitting needle, just try and have them all lying flat to one side or the other, both seams. I think it's too fiddly to try and press it so that the seams are open and, and that possibly wouldn't be as, as good. But it just helps it all lie, lie flat. So I'm just going to stuff this again now. Nalty undid it and did it again. Um, and I'll come back to it and I'll show you when it's finished. Okay, I've just stopped stuffing this head for a second just so I can show you what I mean by the seam allowance. So I'm hoping that with the light you can see that here the seam allowance goes to one side. So this is all fine, all, all the same side. But then it starts to go a little bit strange over here. So all I do here is take the point of my knitting needle, pop it into Luna's head, sorry Luna, and then I just tease the seam allowance out and across to, the, to one side with the point, making sure that I'm very careful not to puncture my stitches or the fabric. And then if I just use the blunt end just to stuff that again, you'll start to see that that's sitting a lot nicer now. So yeah, it just, help, it just helps keep everything looking really sweet and smooth. Okay, a bit more stuffing needed now. And so here we go, we've got a finished Luna head all nicely stuffed. We've just got her neck opening that will tuck up inside when we attach it onto the cone of the body. But as you can, oh, fluff on its ears, look. There you can see, nice and neatly sewn in, all matched up and much easier for my machine to manage getting those ears in. So I hope that's a useful tip for you. Have a go, see what you think. Um, do look forward to reading your comments in the bottom and see if it's worked for you or not. Um, and good luck with your Lunas. Enjoy!